Okay, so let's just cut to the chase. You want to know what God's will is for your life, and you want to follow it. You want to be obedient. You want to walk that path, and I feel like a lot of people, myself included, get God's will misconstrued. A lot of people come to God, and they're like, well, I want to be fruitful. I want to multiply. I want to have a house. I want to have a wife. I want to have kids. I want to be rich. I want all of these things, and that is your own selfish desires. That is your own will and God's will is completely different from your own will. So let's just look at Romans 12 where God is talking about his will for man. Romans 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So why doesn't he want you to be conformed by this world? Because the beliefs, the programming, the TV, the music, everything that comes up out of this world that is influenced by the enemy through man is not from God. The whole system the whole rulership, everything inside of this world does not come from God. And the prince and the power of the air is the enemy. And us as man, we have free will. Do we want to be righteous or do we want to live a life that's sinful? Obviously, it's more difficult to live a righteous, sinless life and to follow God. It's a broad path to destruction. So that's why this world is under the influence of the evil one. God is not chaining us saying, you you gotta follow me. You must walk with me. No, God wants to know if your love is true, if your love is pure, and if you really want to follow him. And that's why we have free will. That's why we get the choice to decide because that really proves our loyalty. So anyways, he doesn't want you to be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Now there's three different tiers when it comes to God's will. There's one that's good, there's one that's acceptable, and there's one that's perfect. And a lot of people, including myself, when they think about God's will, they think about money, popularity, houses, kids, lands, all of these different things that fill our own selfish desires, which is our own will. But the way you start to walk into God's will is by becoming sanctified over time. The moment you answer that call, God will start to renew your mind. God will start to sanctify you. God will bring up the purities in your heart. God will bring all the errors in your character. God will expose flaws, transform flaws. God will mold you. He is the potter and you are the clay. The will isn't going to be, I do one prayer and now I'm in God's will. No, because there's pruning that has to take place inside of us, in our minds, in our spirits, in our hearts. There is major, major pruning that has to take place. If you're just an absolute sinner in the depths of the darkness and then you just come to God, it's not going to be his will right away because God works on the spirit. God works on the heart. God works on the character and that is a majority of his work and things will change on the exterior the more interior work that takes place. The more interior things that change around inside of yourself, the more pure you become and the more the impurities get out of your system the more your life will start to change on the exterior. So when you think of all the luxurious things, there's a lot of work that has to take place. And for God's will, you need a heart that is like God's. You need eyes that are like God's. You need a spirit that is like God's. And that takes pruning. That takes sanctifying. And over time, when God transforms your mind, your spirit, and your heart, there will come a time to where you will have the desire to go and pursue God's actual will. What he wants and what he desires from you. What he desires from your vessel. Because his will and your will are completely different. We have our own selfish tendencies of money, of greed, of pride, of exposure. And then there's God's will. Sometimes it can be boring. It's like, yeah, like this is strange. I don't want to do that. Oh, that sounds ridiculous. That's not something I even want to do. That's not something I even want to be a part of. But you can tell it's of God and it's what he wants you to do. Ephesians 5, 17. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. It's going to be very hard to spiritually discern or to pick up on what God's will is because 
because you have so many impurities. You have pride. You have ego. You have arrogance. You have all of these things that are your own obstacle. That are blocking you from having that wherewithal, that understanding, that knowledge to know what's your will and what's God's will. The more sanctified you become, the more pure you become, the more you will start to tap into God's will and you will have the heart, you will have the desire, and you will have the passion to do such a thing because you are now transformed. And yeah, a lot of people think God's will is like their own will, all of these flashy things, but actually you would be surprised. Sometimes it's boring, it's things you don't even want to do, it's things that don't even make sense, but God is calling you to do it. Your own will would be like, God, you know, I want resources, I want money, I want success, da 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 and then God's will is, hey, go preach to this kid, that's all. Go do some paperwork in this place, that's it. It's completely different, and sometimes you're like, wow, that's boring and I don't want to do it, but that's God's will. And there's three tiers to God's will. There's good, there's acceptable, and there's perfect. Now, three different tiers. So you could be doing God's will, and it could be good in God's eyes, it could be acceptable in God's eyes, and then there could be perfect. There's three tiers, there's three stages, and it requires more pruning, it requires more self-discipline, it requires more battles, it requires more willingness to obey and to have that fear of God, to actually know that he's the king and you're the servant. Like, you really got to be me and you really got to follow in God's steps to do his will. And you got to be afraid of God and all of those things. That helps with his will. Now, you're probably thinking and wondering, well, what is God's will? Because I feel like a lot of people, including myself, they have this backwards inside of their mind. Well, God's will is that I live prosperous, that I live good, that I'm more than a conqueror. Yes, there's a lot of things attached, but here is what I believe God's will is. So God's will is that you represent God. You give glory to God. You're meek, you're loving, helpful, kind, peaceful. You preach the word, you speak the truth. You're not backbiting, you're not jealous, you're not doing all of these things. When people go against you, whatever it may be, you maintain character, you keep your composure, and you give the glory to God. When Jesus walked on this earth, he was kind and respectful and loving to everybody. And here is another scripture. The one who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the devil's work. So when you're in God's will, technically you are destroying the devil's works. Now you're not up against the prince and just going with the boxing gloves because you would be defeated, but there is spiritual wickedness in heavenly realms, and then we have the physical. There's battles going on up there, there's battles going on down here, and your job in God's will is to destroy the devil's works. A lot of people think it may be something contrary, like, oh, I'm just going to make music, I'm going to do something that's amazing, that's lovely, that's going to please myself, but in reality, you are destroying the devil's works. Now, of course, when you're working with God, you're going to be sent certain battles, certain things, you're going to go through a lot of different experiences. It's completely different from just being a normal civilian, because here, I want to show you guys something right here. So, this is what happens when you start moving and operating with God. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So, the normal human is wrestling against flesh and blood. They're arguing with their boss. They're disrespecting authority. They're talking back to others. They're in arguments. They're in the flesh and blood, and that's their battle. Listen, when you're walking with God, that is the lightest battle of all time. And if we could just go back, man, that would be amazing. But when you start walking with God, here is what you will be equipped for, but against principalities. So what is this? Well, it's princes and regions and territories of demonic powers, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly realm. So it starts to become very spiritual, and it just depends on how far you want to go, what you're equipped to fight against. There are some people who are going against evil rulers, governments, like it just depends. It's all based off tears. God is not going to give you more than you can handle. Now, there is going to be flesh and blood things that do go down because the enemy, he has a systematic string of people he can operate through, demons, and the way the enemy gets access, uses these monitoring spirits, these demons, is by them sinning. They have an open access to 
the enemy through their heart. In the Bible, it says, do not give a foothold to the devil. Do not be bitter. Do not be angry. Do not have resentment. So everybody who has given a foothold to the devil can be accessed by the devil. And that's one of the ways that the enemy operates is through like a systematic string of people. But it goes way beyond that. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly realms. And now I don't want to frighten people. You're not going to get more than you can handle. You're not going to be overcome by Goliath. David had a bunch of tests. He had a bunch of trials. He had time to have faith in God, to believe in God, to really absorb the truth and to prove God's word. He had a bunch of things leading up to Goliath to where there was this supernatural force that was working through David that allowed him to conquer Goliath. And that's going to be the same thing on your walk, right? David, he slung the stone, but there was that spiritual backing. There was that government of God that allowed him to overcome that giant. And it's going to be the same on your walk, whether it's with the enemy or certain situations, whatever it may be. Because if the devil can pin you in one area, when you evolve, it's going to be something new. And the more you overcome, the bigger the giant is. But greater is he that is in us than in the world. But yeah, you're not going to be faced with more than you can handle. You're going to have tears of demons. You're going to have mice demons, maybe when you're first starting off. And you're going to have, you know, your own internal battles that are quite subtle, like mind attacks and this, that, and the third that don't really last long. And then you overcome that. And then now you have rat demons and you have, you know, a new thing that's going on. And then you have a bear. And then you have a lion. And then you have this that's going on. And then it progresses and then it advances. Spiritually, you become more heavier after you overcome you have more authority you have more belief just like David did here's another scripture after removing Saul he made David their king God testified concerning him I have found David son of Jesse a man after my own heart he will do everything I want him to do so whatever God wants you to do you got to be prepped and ready to do that and you can't be ready to do that if you have you know conflicting thoughts if you're your own obstacle if you're in the way if you're not sanctified enough if you're blocking what God is doing or whatever it may be like it takes some time before you have the heart of God, you have the eyes of God and you're thinking in accordance. So that takes some time. And there's always going to be stages. There's going to be tears. You have to understand that God is the one who puts people in authority. God is the one who lifts people up to the next level. God is the one who promotes because it's all spiritual. God will never promote you. God will never elevate you. God will never push you forward if you haven't done the spiritual work. It's all spiritual. He's not going to put you in a place that you are not ready for. He's not going to open up a door that you are not ready ready for. He's not going to give you access to the people that you were not ready for. It's all in a timely fashion. And it's all stages. It's all tears. It's all work in the secret place. It's all time. Now, God's will is different for all of us because we all have different gifts. We all have different talents. And a lot of people think, well, I can make music. I can play the drums. We always think of like some selfish, stupid kind of desire. Yeah, God can use those gifts, but God works through apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's God's will to have this team that is just an abundance of nutrients. We all offer something different. Apostles offer something different. Prophets offer something different. Evangelists, they offer something different. Pastors, they offer something different. Teachers, they offer something different. So it just depends what God is going to mold you into. But yeah, a lot of people have God's will misconstrued. They think it's blessing, 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 which to get to that place to even be in that position takes a ton of internal work takes a ton of heart changes not being prideful not being arrogant constant tweaks constant repentance constant trials constant evolution like it takes a while to get to that place to where those things will overtake you because it is deserving you have been through more you deserve the honor you deserve the respect because it's just like joseph when he was in the pit to the palace he deserved the the love. He deserved the praise. He deserved the jacket. He deserved all of 
those things. Why? Because he went through more. The same with David. You go through more, so you need more support. You need more love. You need more on your journey because God is putting you through more. And that's just the way it is. But yeah, a lot of Christians believe, hey, I'm saved. Now I'm safe. Listen, the moment you get saved, the moment you turn to God, you're going to go through a lot of spiritual warfare. And once you overcome that attack, the next one will be more sleek. It will be more subtle. You'll have to be more sober-minded and vigilant. And the more you progress, the more wise you have to become, the more spiritual discernment, the more wisdom. Because the enemy, Satan, he masquerades as an angel of light. And the moment you overcome one thing, it's going to be the next after that. And it has to be that way because you have to be prone. You have to earn stripes. You have to be like David and you have to trust in God. You have to trust in the scripture. You have to believe in everything it says. That is by over coming. A lot of Christians, they have just a strange narrative when it comes to Christianity. Listen, it says, we do not battle against flesh and blood. So, before you were a Christian, you were battling against flesh and blood. Now you transfer over and you're on the enemy's radar. Like, you will go through mind attacks, spiritual warfare, all of these things, and when you figure that out, when you overcome it, there may be another thing. The righteous will face many afflictions. The righteous will fall down seven times, but they will rise up again. And when you rise rise up again you just have more strength you have more resiliency so really all of this stuff just builds you and it turns you into a savage it turns you into a warrior and it's up to you how far you want to take it the lord knows you go so far and then eventually probably gonna be battling governments just stay prayed up the secret place is your place that's where you battle we do not wrestle against flesh and blood this is very spiritual you gotta be in the spirit you gotta be in the war room hopefully this video was very edifying fine for you guys and it was sharpening yeah i love you guys and i'll see you in the next one peace